हेलो फ्रेंड्स एवरी वीक आई एम पुटिंग अप क्लिनिकल केस बेस्ड एम सी क्यूज और प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग टाइप ऑफ एम सी क्यूज ऑन ऑल माई सोशल मीडिया हैंडल्स द रीजन बींग दैट इंडियन मेडिकल एजुकेशन सिस्टम इज स्लोली ग्रेजुअली मूविंग टूवर्ड्स क्लिनिकल ओरिएंटेशन मोर एंड मोर क्लिनिकल अप्रोच प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग टाइप ऑफ अप्रोच विच विल हेल्प इन द डायग्नोसिस एंड ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड देर फोर विद दैट इन माइंड एंड विद द approach towards the next exam we are having such next level mcqs next is going to be the pg entrance exam uh, for uh, in the coming batches and therefore uh, let's see this week's mcq and how to solve it it was a little difficult but uh, nevertheless we can see how it, uh, we can make it easy and solve it okay a patient of bronchiectasis is admitted in the icu Uh, or patient of some uh, serious re respiratory condition so this was pertaining to the respiratory system uh, 50% oxygen is started by mask okay and he is given carbohydrate rich liquids through the riles tube now this is theoretical i tell you because after uh, posting the mcq i realized that oxygen given by mask uh, that will cover the mouth and nose and uh, then riles tube put through the nose uh, the, for the patients who are unable to eat by themselves and it's put into the stomach uh, so but let's take it as uh, intermittently this and that oxygen and rice tube okay and the data obtained from the patient was as follows alveolar pco2 45 mm of hg arterial po2 uh, pao2 is 111 mm of hg how much is the alveolar arterial o2 difference a a d o2 in this patient alveolo arterial difference of po2 that's uh, a a d o2 and the options were given as uh, 11 mm of hg 100 mm of hg 111 mm of hg or 200 mm of hg if some of you have uh, tried to solve this mcq and the answer was of course d 200 mm of hg let's try to figure out how we can solve such mcqs now my first suggestion a general suggestion uh, is that whenever you see such long mcqs i know many students uh, immediately get scared uh, because uh, all these years we have been just uh, mugging up the things by hearting the things learning by rote uh, and we were not interested in maths that's why we took uh, bio uh, because problem solving ability was not uh, desirable or not uh, not that much there in us that is what many uh, students think but anyways uh, we have to develop that ability or if it is there we have to groom it further let's see how we can solve this particular problem okay so first things first whenever you see such an mcq try to figure out what is actually asked in this mcq look the question is how much is alveolar arterial o2 difference okay uh, arterial po2 is given already that means we have to calculate alveolar po2 okay and once we calculate that uh, then the difference can be calculated easily okay so uh, the mcq revolves around the calculation of alveolar po2 right and arterial po2 is given and then we can uh, make uh, calculate the difference between the two alveolar po2 is uh, calculated by the alveolar air equation and uh, the alveolar air equation i'll first write the equation then i'll explain and then we will come to the final answer okay it is about p a o2 partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar air is equal to make two brackets in the first bracket we will write f i o2 into p barometric minus p h2 o and uh, that's the first bracket and then in the second bracket 
पी ए सी ओ टू अपॉन आर दिस इज द अल्वियोलर एयर इक्वेशन नाउ इफ आई आस्क यू टू बाय हार्ट दिस इक्वेशन यू मे डू इट बट देन इवेंचुअली यू विल फर्गेट इट देर फोर लेट्स जस्ट क्विकली अंडरस्टैंड वॉट दिस इक्वेशन इज अबाउट एंड देन सॉल्व द एम सी क्यू ओके फ्रैक्शन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन द इंस्पायर्ड एयर दैट इज एफ आई ओ टू वेन वी आर इंस्पायरिंग एटमोस्फेरिक एयर एट सी लेवल ऑक्सीजन is about 20% i am ignoring the decimal fractions so let's say oxygen in this air is about 20% that is what is a fraction of oxygen in the inspired air and uh, in the given mcq patient was being given oxygen by mask and 50% oxygen was delivered so fraction of oxygen in the inspired air for the patient was actually 50% not 20% okay uh, second p barometric look all of us are breathing air at sea level where the barometric pressure is 760 mm of hg and ph2o is partial pressure of water vapor and in the second bracket paco2 a uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar air divided by r r is the respiratory quotient so these are the uh, meanings of all these terms now let's uh, understand what this equation is all about look we are talking about po2 in the alveolar air let's see how the oxygen travels from the atmospheric air up to the alveolus we inspire the atmospheric air or in the case of this patient a uh, patient was breathing uh, through the mask and oxygen was being delivered this oxygen enters the respiratory passage the dead space and some change occurs there because of which the po2 decreases what is the change there is humidification of air that is addition of water vapor to the inspired air so that's the first change over there and then this humidified air goes into the alveolus so we have to take into account this addition of water vapor to your inspired uh, gas mixture okay and then finally oxygen reaches alveolus what happens in the alveolar air PaO2 means partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar air in the alveolus oxygen which has reached the alveolus is constantly diffusing into the pulmonary blood so its concentration is decreasing in the alveolar air and decreasing by how much it is decreasing by the pressure which is now exerted by the carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide from the blood is coming into the alveolar air okay all our focus is on constant uh, on uh, calculating the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar air what is happening here oxygen is getting replaced by carbon dioxide so uh, oxygen concentration is decreasing and therefore po2 also is decreasing po2 is decreasing by how much by the pressure which is now exerted by the carbon dioxide in this mixture in the alveolar air and therefore all those things have been taken into account fraction of oxygen in the inspired air 50% in the case of this patient p barometric since patient is uh, being uh, given uh, oxygen at the one atmospheric pressure which is 760 mm of hg minus partial pressure of water vapor 47 mm of hg so this bracket has a value of uh, 713 mm of hg out of the total pressure when the air goes in the dead space it gets humidified means the total pressure will remain 760 but out of that 47 mm of hg uh, will be exerted by water vapor 
in the dead space in the respiratory passage that means the remaining pressure that is 713 will be exerted by the remaining gases and in those remaining gases oxygen is how much whether it is 20 percent if we are inspiring atmospheric air or in the case of this patient 50 percent is the oxygen so fraction of oxygen in the inspired air is 50 percent and therefore po2 in the dead space will be 50 percent of this figure whatever it is that's the bracket number one and in the other bracket we have written pacu2 upon r from this PO2 that we calculated in the inspired air, in the dead space, in the respiratory passage, we have to further deduct minus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Why? I told you just now, because oxygen concentration is decreasing in the alveolar air. Why? Because oxygen is diffusing into the blood, pulmonary blood, and it is getting replaced by carbon dioxide. So now in the total pressure of 760, carbon dioxide is exerting some pressure, okay? And that pressure is coming directly at the expense of oxygen. Carbon dioxide is coming in the alveolus and replacing the oxygen. Therefore, the oxygen concentration is falling in the alveolar air. How much is the carbon dioxide pressure uh, in the given uh, MCQ? It is 45 mm of Hg. So, we have to uh, just uh, minus it from the first bracket. That is what we do so far. And finally, PaCO2 divided by R. R is the respiratory quotient. Respiratory quotient is calculated like this. CO2 evolved per unit O2 consumed. You know, uh, our body and body tissues are consuming oxygen. And as, a, as an end product, they are liberating the carbon dioxide. So, we have to that, uh, take that into account. The respiratory quotient for mixed diet. See, oxygen is consumed means uh, the nutrients are metabolized in the presence of oxygen and carbon dioxide is liberated. So, when we eat a mixed diet, the respiratory quotient is 0.8. But when we eat carbohydrate rich diet, the respiratory quotient is 1, okay. That's where uh, the, that data came into account. The patient was being fed uh, carbohydrate rich juices through the Ryles tube, which means the respiratory quotient will be 1.0, 1.0. So, you have to understand uh, the use, correct use of data. Our respiratory quotient in this patient is 1.0. Why is that? Because when the carbon dioxide, uh, I mean, when the carbohydrates are being used for energy production, then uh, the respiratory quotient is 1. For the fat-rich diet, by the way, just let me add it here. If it's a fat-rich diet, the respiratory quotient becomes 0.7. It is less. Means, more oxygen is consumed and less CO2 is evolved and therefore the value of respiratory quotient or R is less in the case of fats, uh, consumption of fats. Here it is a carbohydrate rich diet, so it is a one to one ratio of oxygen consumed by the body and carbon dioxide liberated as an end product. Why do we have to consider R in this, uh, in this uh, alveolar air equation? Why are we using it? It's because uh, we are saying in the alveolar air equation, we are saying that CO2 is replacing O2. So, we need to know how much CO2 is being generated per unit time by the body and uh, how much oxygen is being consumed. Okay, That is when we will exactly know how much CO2 is replacing O2 in the alveolar air. So, respiratory quotient for the body is this. This is how we calculate it and why it is required in the equation finally in the denominator in the second bracket is because we said that carbon dioxide replaces oxygen in the alveolar air. So, this is how uh, 
the alveolar equation stands and I explain to you the meaning of each of these terms. Now talking about the, uh, the data given for this patient, 760 minus 47, humidification of air in the dead space, uh, therefore the total pressure 760 out of which now 47 exerted by the water vapor, remaining pressure 713 which is exerted by the remaining gases which are inspired by us or by the patient in this case. And patient was inspiring 50% oxygen by that uh, mask. That means partial pressure of oxygen in the dead space will be 50% of 713. So that comes out to be in the range of uh, what 356 or 357 in that range mm of Hg. That's first bracket minus second bracket was PaCO2 45 upon R that was 1.0 because uh, car uh, carbohydrate rich juices are being fed to the patient. So therefore, finally, uh, when we solve this equation, it comes out to be 311 mm of Hg. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar air by putting all the values in the equation, it is 311 mm of Hg, yeah, okay. And uh, arterial PO2, that is PaO2, is already given to us, how much? 111 mm of Hg. So, how much will be the AADO2, alveolar arterial difference of PO2, uh, it is 311 minus 111 that is 200 mm of Hg, that was the answer to this MCQ. Uh, did I miss something? Okay, let me just add a small little point here. We are taking into account law of partial pressure of gases. When I said uh, oxygen will exert 50% of 713. It is based on the law of partial pressures. A gas in a mixture will exert its own pressure which is called as partial pressure of that gas and that partial pressure co will correspond to its relative concentration in the mixture. If a gas is 50% in the mixture, then it will exert 50% of the total pressure. So, in the dead space, uh, oxygen partial pressure would be 50% of 713. I am talking about this patient, okay, because we have given oxygen by oral mask and 50% uh, oxygen is being delivered. So, that was one thing uh, which uh, need, needed some explanation. And this is how we solve this particular MCQ and the answer was 200 mm of Hg tough one but then uh, what was required alveolar air equation once you know what is required and how to make use of the data then solving of mcqs such mcqs will be a piece of cake